Hello everybody, welcome back to MJ Games and welcome back to Wild Winds Amusement Park as we are on episode 5 and today we are going to try to build out, well I say today, but in, the, in this video um, my plan is to build out this area um, to this coaster and you know my idea is I want it to, as you're walking up this way I want the kind of coaster area to be hidden until you kind of come around a corner. And I don't know if I'm going to keep this pathing style because my thought initially was to have potentially go this way for the Giga Coaster, go this way for the Invert. And so I don't know if I'm going to keep this pathing style because I'm not really liking it too much yet. But then again, I just got to kind of um, figure out what I kind of want. You know, I'm going to obviously make the station, put a transfer track in, same thing over here. I gotta figure out if this is how I want the pathing to be, and if this is how I want the pathing to look. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of idea for today. No new coaster or anything, but at the end we will take a POV of this coaster and of this one as well. And I'm gonna get building, and I'll see you guys at the first update. So quick update here for the first one is I just want to kind of show you how I've kind of changed up my initial thought of what I wanted to have that area kind of look like. And I've done a little bit different stuff to this area. I'm going to put some, probably just some bushes and stuff in here. Nothing too crazy. Probably no trees. Because I really do like the look of that right there. And how that looks. And initially I was thinking I'd put like a transfer track here. But that was just going to be kind of tough to kind of make it fit naturally. And so I'm going to put a transfer track over here to where it's this is elevated. And you see this a lot when you actually look at the Google Map view of theme parks, how they have smaller kind of buildings underneath some coasters, or they've got paths that kind of go all the way around. And especially like if you look at Kings Island and Diamondback, and I mean even like the Beast, all those in that area, there's just gravel paths everywhere since it's kind of near the back of the park yeah so i still haven't done anything else with this queue area i'm trying to figure out how i want it to look do i want to keep having this and but we do have a station or at least the concept for the station to begin with and then you know i'll just need some supports and beams going across and stuff like that and i think for here to kind of block this i'm going to use the thick wooden beams uh, we'll see though, just because of how that was placed, and you know, obviously got to do the fencing and stuff. But then when you come out of the exit, to kind of block off this area, make it kind of look hilly and stuff, put some rocks up there, some bushes and greens and stuff, and then this fencing. And I think I'm going to carry this, because I do like how this looks. I mean, not that that's bad, but I do kind of like the, the look of the fencing with the little bit of detail. And so we got this fencing kind of going up this way. And then this is going to be a, a big kind of eating area. And so there's going to be, um, this could be a covered patio. There's going to be food under, or uh, seats underneath. This is going to be, there's probably going to be some flowers here and stuff. And there'll be a door. And this won't be accessible, but it's going to be um, a food place. And it's just a building to kind of take up space. But then we're going to have this. So just imagine... And I think this is where I want it to be. I don't know for sure. Um, because I've kind of been playing around a little bit with the design and stuff. But, you know, you don't want it to necessarily go over a path. Because you don't want potentially stuff to fall out and hit the guests that are walking below. And so even there, as you're walking up, you then get the glimpse of that going in the air. So that would be really cool. And then my thought was have a pathway this way that kind of ventures out to where the invert coaster would be. And then here... We've got the sign for Windrush. Yeah, so the idea with this was to kind of create a nice visual as you're kind of walking up. And, um, you know, I could also change the location of where that sign is. Like, I could put the actual sign kind of right here and just have this kind of be more of a flower bed and stuff. But this was, this was cool to make. Um, you know, it just kind of gives it that extra little detail in this plaza area. I might end up using different flooring than that. But we'll see. And then, you know, started kind of the idea of the layout of the station queue and stuff and how I want the station to look. So I don't know if I'm going to have this o this full overhang or not. 
that was my initial kind of thoughts and ideas. And yeah, so this is kind of how it's looking so far. Definitely going to put in the transfer track. And I think, yeah, I'm just trying to think about where this best be located at. Because in real life, so, you know, I might redo this ending a little bit to give myself a little bit more space because it would be phenomenal if I could just have the transfer track on this side. Because in real life, with Fury 325, the transfer track's on the front instead of on the back. Um, but I could definitely put it on the back right here. Actually, you know what? That probably makes the most sense to put it right here. And you know this area, I'm not really going to detail it at all just for the sake of space and stuff, but this would be where you've got a lot of kind of warehouses and backstage stuff. And like for anybody who's ridden Orion at Kings Island, there's a lot of, you can see a lot of that from the coaster if you're actually paying attention. But yeah, that's it so far. Like I said, I just kind of changed the design, the layout, because I like how it carowinds with Fury 325 when you kind of walk up to it and you turn the corner, you're seeing the whole lift hill. So if you're walking this way, you're seeing the station, but you're getting a glimpse of the lift hill. Whereas before, if we will walk straight this way, you'd just be seeing the, the back of the park and nothing special. And then now this building, I just made, I don't know if I'm going to use it somewhere, but this was how, this is a building at, at Carowinds that's like a food building, and it's it's a massive building with seating outside and stuff. And so I was just trying to kind of model it after, and obviously it's not detailed much or anything. Um, but that could possibly go somewhere because it takes up space. And that's one thing I am trying to do is trying to build more buildings and just have more more stuff. Because if I'm telling you guys, go onto Google Maps and look up theme parks. I mean, it is just, there's buildings everywhere. It's insane how many buildings there are. But yeah, they're basically, so many of them are connected too. But yeah, that's the first update, and I'll see you guys at the next one. So welcome to the next to last update, and at quick glance, it doesn't look like a ton, but there's actually been a fair amount that I've gotten done with here, and I want to start with this spinning coaster. Is it testing? Let me see. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Um, yeah, so I kind of changed up the, still haven't changed the um, name to it, and the day I'm filming this is the day that I put the pictures online of kind of what's to come and there are a couple of really good names on there that I'm going to choose from um, Vortex being one of them because that's that's an awesome potential name for this um, but yeah so as we kind of go up this queue I've changed the way it moves just a little bit just because of the it's just a little tedious trying to get it to work properly and as we can see so we've now got the path going this way. I need to terrain paint a little bit more too. But we've got the protective covering there. And I think I, oh yeah, I need to connect that protective covering to the track. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> it's just hovering in midair. So we come this way. And then we come up into the station. And I've just used the thick wooden beams here and then the haunted house wooden pillar for you know just this separation here and so I've, I've tested out and i think it's about um waist high so i mean i think it's a you know good amount nothing too crazy i like using the haunted house wooden beams on the edge to kind of you know hide the ugly curb and i'll pick i'll put a couple doors down here but here's the station really really happy with how the stations turned out and how it looks and i will say i got the idea for this from a video that was released recently or at least the top portion by i think it's average matt i think is how you say his name i gotta make sure and check um but he's doing a challenge series on his youtube channel from he's a pc gamer and part of it was you know he had a station similar to this but he used just thick wooden beams and then scaffolding pieces and then we've got some lights in here. So if we look at nighttime, you know, we got lights it up enough. Haven't lit up the queue or anything. So there's the station. And then here is, so I need to terrain paint this. And I'm just going to have it kind of be like, instead of it being tarmac, or I might make that tarmac. We'll see. But I'm um, right now I'm thinking of making it just this kind of dirt, kind of rock color. Then we got a little kind of edge here kind of separate and this is another um well, my maintenance area back here or just a way for trucks and cars to get here and then here's gonna be the transfer track 
So like I said, haven't completed this yet. But the reason I've got kind of this, um, a lot of the ceiling pieces around is just because of how the terrain was kind of working out. So yeah, that's kind of how it needs to work. I also need to put some chain link fence around this area since it gets really close to the ground for the coaster. And then, yeah, so if we come down this way, I do honestly really like how this looks. Kind of putting some rocks and bushes up on the, the kind of ledge. And so we've got this fence kind of going around. And you got a little bit of rocks and bushes in here. And then, you know, you got some rocks and some trees and stuff in here. And so this is really, really coming together, this, this area. And then if we move up this way, it's like we've seen this fencing before. Now this is going to be a door for the backstage kind of staff area. And then I've kind of changed up the look of this. So this will kind of be like a seating area here. And then, you know, this will be kind of like the main entryway into the building. And then I don't really know what this is going to be. Probably just another kind of entryway. And this is going to be, it's going to say like a food hall or something like that so it's just supposed to be like a big dining area i'll probably put like two do i put restaurants in here yeah i'll probably put like two different stalls one drink one food stall um and then you know we've seen this and for the supports just kind of using some basic scaffolding pieces and i'm starting to continue kind of looking at the edge of the park with that um wooden style fencing there kind of separating it and then this is going to be an on-ride photo section or where you can get your photos. At least that's my idea with it. And then we've got a transfer track over here. So this is kind of, I'm trying to get the, it's not the exact same, but trying to make it similar to, um, why am I blanking now? Trying to make it similar to Orion's style of transfer track. So it's, it's going to be enclosed, but it's not going to be the full building enclosed. It's going to be more open air. And then, you know, here's just the transfer track, which is just the I-beams with the locomotive rail on top. And I probably I probably could have raised this out a little bit more, but you know what, at this point, I'm not going to do that. But the thing was, I have two of them going each direction, which, oh, I didn't realize that I didn't get that perfect. But the idea in theory is that you'd have a wheel or something kind of go in between the two Um yeah, and then I've added lights, and we've got these these cameras on here, which I probably don't need as many cameras as I put, but then I've got some cable wiring running from the cameras and the cable boxes. And then here, I need to figure out how I want to do this, but I've got a cable box, those cables running down to the ground. And so, yeah, still just got to figure out a couple things, but with these lights on here... This is what it what it looks like. I thought about doing one every four meters, but that almost just seemed too much. So I decided to go with one every eight meters. And yeah, so this is going to be the, like I said, this is the final kind of um, update before the park is complete for this episode or this area is complete. And like I said, I want to try to get done with basically this spot in here. So nothing more than that. We're not going to focus on here because the idea is that the invert coaster would go over here. So, yeah, I'll see you guys once I am complete with this area. Hello, everybody. And we are now at the final update. And I'm not going to lie, this is probably the most excited I've been after finishing kind of a build area. Um, just what it ended up looking like is we have Vortex here, which it looks like nobody's wanting to ride Vortex right now. Um, I guess it does have a lower rating just because of the type of coaster it is. But we saw before the station. So if we take a look here, we'll actually go go this way. So we can kind of get a good look at the station right there. At least from this view. And then if we walk up. Yeah, so I'm really happy with how this turned out with the fencing. And, you know, here you can see a little bit into the backstage, but, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, I need to put, I still need to put a door, garage door on that. I did not deck out the entire, or the interior of that, just to save on piece count and stuff like that. And so here we are. 
which nobody's wanting to ride the ride. Why does it only have one car? Well, I guess it really doesn't matter if nobody's wanting to ride the coaster. Um, because I thought I turned it on. But yeah. Then here we are. And then I'll do an overhead view of it as well, kind of as we, at the end, and kind of go over some things. So there's some things I want to touch on. Remember, this is a building I built before. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. Um, as I said before, I just kind of still have it sitting there. But now, I need to put some signs on this building here to the left because we need to kind of figure out the name of it. Oh, I just love that view right there as a guess. As you can just peek over and see, it looks amazing. Um, I need to figure out what I want to call kind of this food court area. But I will show you real quick. There is an interior for guests to walk into, but not for us. Um, so I need to put like a little... Oh, no, no. Hate when that happens. <laughs> oh man, I don't know why it's so easy to get stuck on those things. It's like flip cam mode is great, but then there's just some things with flip cam mode that's like you would think they'd figure this out by now. Like, why do we have to jump back to where we started it at? But you can even see just above the building where some of those tall trees are now, and you can kind of see trees in the background. So we got the entryway, still need to add some windows. We got a little planter here, which I've added some trees and flowers now. And I haven't really finished the area around that ride yet, just because I don't fully know what I want it to look like. So I'm going to kind of wait until I start building the invert coaster over here to make some more buildings and stuff. But then we come around to Wild Winds, and we have a station. And I got the idea for this station off of um, from Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia. And it's not the exact same, but it's a, it's the same kind of general style. And then, you know, we've got this food building here where the guests can walk into. And it's kind of funny with, with how low the ceilings are. I had to place a couple of them down in the ground. <laughs> but there's still, a path, there's still a path going to it, or else the, the height of it would have been touching the ceiling. So kind of funny how that worked out. Um, but yeah, we, so we have Windrush. And then we have this um, uh, this Frisbee ride. I uh, need to figure out what I want to call it. Max Air, maybe, or something like that. But now here we have the queue. So we have this fencing. Now I've got this fencing going all the way around. And then I've got kind of, you know, just put a little bit of foliage there. And then here we've got the kind of little garden foliage on the right. And I like these trees because it really blocks off the view. So now we go up here, and I put number signs up to for the for the lanes. And one thing that I think is cool is I created this little road or not road, <laughs> these little stairs for the employees if they need to get down there. And now we have here's the coaster, and I changed the color a little bit um, just to kind of match the colors. And so now at nighttime. These lights give off no light, so I had to kind of hide the area lights underneath. As you can see um, out there, that's kind of a custom operator kind of thing that I've made. And I guess we could, but yeah, we'll uh, look at it in a second um, when we go look at overhead view. So now when we walk down we've got a uh, ride photos and it's nothing like too crazy i saw this trick used by planet bro coaster this corbel piece kind of looks almost like it could be an old school cash register um but i put the photos up there and depending on which row you were sitting in it's gonna be for your picture and i don't actually have an on ride photo at this point but yeah so that's what we have been working on so now if we look at the overhead view let's start with vortex right here so, like I said before, I, I love the look of this station. I think it's nice. I think the lighting ends up working out. Um, I got this idea from Average Matt Plays. I think it's the name of the channel. Because he did something similar to this with the windows. Different style, look different, but the same concept with the windows there. And like I said, this transfer track is not going to be decked out on the inside just for the sake of piece count. 
Um, probably need to put some railings here. But one thing I've started to do as well is kind of try to get some some service roads going to this area. Because eventually this is going to connect. And if I were to ever have any extra percent, this is where I could build um, like a whole warehouse section. Or even up here. And I've started to put some trees down. Um, and one thing I did here is I'm probably not going to put any more trees behind it. And the reason is, is like, it just everything really needs to be visible or it needs to be about, okay, how are the guests going to see it? Because when you're down in guest view and you're looking at that, it looks like it's really heavily wooded and stuff behind kind of this back area of the park. And so I'm not going to do anything else over here. Just I'm just going to leave it that way. Um, this, in theory, could be a you know, maintenance warehouse area as well. But yeah, and then one thing too, so with these trees here, I wonder your thoughts on if if you if you like these trees right here. And they're very bushy. Essentially all that I did was I took the let's see, where is it? And I'm sure some of you guys know this trick as well. You can do it with the brazel nut, but I like using the kapuk trees. Or, yeah, how you pronounce them. So you do that. Oh, gosh. I hate when that happens when it's like... I forget to turn off stick to surface and so forth. All right. So now you lower it a little bit, and then you just change the change the way it's it's facing. And so the idea there is it creates a more lush type tree. I mean, you can do the same thing with the oak trees. You can do it with every type of tree. But this one has got like a really cool kind of green look to it. And sometimes you can mix the two, um, the two type of um, trees like the, is this the one I use first? Yeah. So then you can take this one and you can try to fit them as close as possible. And just because now this gives a little bit different of a um, of a look in terms of the direction that the leaves are going um, and branches and stuff. But yeah, so I just put those. I think the foliage does help. And because over here, this foliage blocks off the view to the backstage. And then when you're here in line, this also blocks off the view to the backstage. Um, and like I said, this is a uh, really happy with how this has turned out. I can't remember if this, in the last um, update, if I had this kind of made already. But one thing that I have done, if you look to the left side, is I've created this kind of sectioned off area. And so all that I did was I made sure that these pieces were just a little bit taller than these pieces right here. And then I just created a border. And what I actually created it with is the temple trim. So I think it gives kind of a cool kind of look to it. Um, and I just placed them all around. How many pieces was that? 42. Ooh, that's actually more than I thought it was going to be. Um, but yeah, and doing that just kind of creates this nice sectioned off area. And it allows me to kind of handle the, the pieces a little bit more. And I also laid down cement pathing here just because if we look underneath... Let me just, there we go. If we look underneath here, you know, we've got some grassy parts and stuff like that. Um, and then also going to not really do anything else with this hill. Just kind of leave it like that. I do need to terrain paint more. But I just, I really like the look of this station from down there. And, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Just art shapes, basic art shapes. Like I said, these are a little custom stairway that I made. And then one thing here is, you know, I took this from, I think it was Avery Forest where I made some of these. I put some lights on the coaster as well. Oh, I can't control the camera today. But this is just the basic operator boost. So what I did was I took a square and they basically made four squares. And then I did another one behind it, took the cube to kind of have it, have that extension to it. And I just made it a little bit smaller to where you can see that the front part's a little bit larger. And then these are these are just emergency emergency lights. These are the emergency lights turned around. 
that give it so you can see the back portion of it and then these right here are just um, ornaments and I've just got them turned different ways and colored differently and this is really closely resembles a picture that I saw that I took of um, when I was watching a YouTube video about a transfer track at Kentucky Kingdom I think it's for their hybrid coaster and then what I did here is I just created kind of a custom like the wires essentially would run down through here and the wires run underneath those protective plates to the generator and then this one here the wire that would run through there and so forth um, and then here on the brake run added that as well added some wires all the way up as well as lights and so if we look at night time so it's lit up enough and I did that on the lift hill as well not the wires part um, but it is kind of cool seeing the uh, <laughs> since we are using a traffic light I guess I could yeah emergency light um, I guess there's no way to not have it on a loop but yeah and then the transfer track um, I'm not going to deck this out any more than it already is because there are some more details that I should put in um, but I'm trying to keep keep stuff realistic now, but I wanted it to kind of resemble in a way the station even though the colors are different I guess I could color the roof the same um, But I wanted to kind of resemble that and I do need I, I should put electric wiring and stuff like that I, I'll be honest. I totally forgot to do that um, But I probably won't just like I said from this uh, for the sake of peace count even though I did it over here This was kind of at the beginning of starting to make the transfer track and so how this is going to work right here is this, right, this spot is also going to be essentially um, uh, employee um, roads and stuff that's going to go behind here, and then it's going to go behind the um, the inverted coaster here, and I'll probably work it up here to where, wherever the hybrid coaster and stuff is going to be. And so that's just kind of the idea. And, you know, I still have some stuff that I need to work on here. But I absolutely love, love, love how this has turned out so far. And last thing to look at before we write, do a POV is we have the, I need to put the staff only sign there. So we have, you know, I just put this little building back here. Um, and then we've got, like I showed you before, we've got this little space here for a truck to drive down if need be for some reason. Yeah, I'm just really, really stoked about how this has turned out, and I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. And this, like I said, this is called Vortex, and um, the favorite option that I heard for this one was called Little Dipper. Now, I haven't um, put a sign up yet, but I need to. So let's go ahead and take a ride on these two coasters. Let's see. Oh, it's still closed. I thought I'd opened it. Apparently not. All right, so that was Vortex, which I know you guys had seen a POV of it before. And it stopped right here because of um, the block sections and so forth. I added a small trim here just to try to get it not going as fast throughout this first section of it. And I'll be honest, I, like I said before, I've worked so long on this trying to get that part to not be too crazy. But... Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to live with that. But I love just the kind of, you know, as you're spinning, you just constantly are getting views of the coaster, the Giga, and everything. Um, 
And we're going to end this episode again by riding the Giga Coaster. But we're going to ride it at night this time. I know most of the park's not really lit up, but it's just a, a different view that we haven't seen before. And especially with all the, the lighting on the brake run and the lift hill. But before, I'm going to kind of give you guys a little rundown on next episode. So next episode, my plan is to have this area complete. And so this is what I'll be working on. Um, I don't know if another flat ride. We'll probably put one more flat ride in here just so it's not outnumbered by coasters. And then we're going to do the invert coaster in this area. Um, I definitely want to take some inspiration from from like Banshee and stuff like that. Um, maybe the one at Hershey Park. So we'll see. But that's that's the plan. And so I hope to see you guys again next week. And then after that, um, for episode 7, I'll probably do some tidying up around some areas because the idea is I wanted to have, I wanted to do a, like a midway park tour so we can do like a full park tour of what we've done so far and kind of seeing everything kind of put together. Um, but I love how this has turned out. This has been a really good episode, in my opinion, just kind of like this station is, uh, it, it turned out better than I, than I thought when I started working on it. So really stoked about it. So let's go ahead and change this to nighttime. And while we hop on the coaster, as always, thank you guys so much for all your support. And I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful rest of their day.